I just returned from riding the UK's original and premier gravel event called the Grip Fest and had a great time, a real blast riding amazing trails in mid Wales. And I checked out some of the cool bikes being ridden by people at the event and also checked out the new products from WTB and Telfin and gave the new Cervelo Esperia one final test before it goes back tomorrow. Now, Grit Fest has been going since 2018, which I attended, which seems an awfully long time ago. And back then when gravel was fairly new, there were people fear-mongering that it was a fad. But as my attendance at the event this weekend showed, it's definitely not a fad, it's here to stay and brighter and bigger and bolder and more exciting than ever before. And what my attendance at the event showed is that the format for this event works really well. They use an enduro format popular in motorbiking and rally where you have short time sessions within a long distance route. So rather than race 200 miles flat out like Unbound, you're racing shorter time sessions within that long distance route. And what the format means is you can race those sessions flat out as fast as you like if you're a competitive person and then regroup with your riding pals for the linking stages between and have a more social, relaxed approach to those bits between the racy bits. Or if you're like me, ride the whole thing at a steady pace and just enjoy a good day on the bike. Oh, it's Dave. Hi, mate. But now let's look at some of the, the cool bikes that grabbed my attention and were being ridden and raced at this event. So who are you and what are you riding? Uh, Ryan Beavis and I'm riding a Tom Sturdy Scylla uh, Thai 3D printed bike. Pretty special. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, it's named after his his late mother. Okay. Uh, she's a bit of an adventurous soul, I think. Um, yeah, and it's a tribute to her. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And it's packed full of unique details, isn't it? Like handlebar yeah. stem, the brake levers, the cranks. That's it, Seat yeah, post. everything pretty much Tom's made. Uh, yeah, bottom bracket, uh, yeah, bars. He's customized the, the levers, even down to the disc brake rotor. Oh, the um, center lock. Yeah, center locks, yeah. Uh, so yeah, how, how all, is it ride? What were you riding before this? And how's it uh, I've had a number of bikes, Okay. all carbon really. I haven't rode okay. tie for, for years. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been using big tires up till probably this event really. Yeah. But, yeah, it's fast, really fast. I don't really notice the difference, you know, oh, yeah. from carbon to to this, to be honest. Um, put a smile on your nose. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's like Tom, I know Tom well. He's a good friend of mine, and yeah. um, it's just nice to ride in a bike that he's made and you know, made in the yeah. UK. And yeah, it's a beautiful bit of kit. It gets noticed everywhere I go, really. <laughs> um, um, let's talk about equipment. You got some uh, WTB tires on. Yeah. How wide and what tread have you gone for? Forty uh, fives. Do you normally uh, run wide tires? It's forty five, kind of standard. No, I don't tend to go or? anything lower than or. Uh, narrower than 40. Okay, yeah. Um, I do like to smash the downhills. <laughs> I do enjoy the like, yes, you know, I'm not getting any faster on the uphill, so it's nice to yeah. actually give, you know, send it on the downhills. And with a 40, you've got to, you know, you've got to be a bit sort of um, gentle with them. But with the 45s, 40, you know, anything over 43, 44, there, you know, you can just go full gas in, can't you? So, uh, yeah, always have ridden sort of anything up to or from 44, yeah. I do like the, the tan on them, it's a nice tan. I think it does complement the, the bike like it looks very you know. special yeah so we're at a grit fest i know you've done loads of gravel events because you're a busy uh racing cyclist what's next on your radar what's the big target this year for you with this bike um, i assume you're riding this bike the whole yeah. season oh yeah yeah so uh big plan well plan is to go to the worlds in, in okay. october i'm gonna give that a crack i yeah. did i went out there last year for the year it was the same event but it was the euros last year uh, gave that a go and yeah. And you qualified the, I assume, you? Yeah, yeah. Where did you qualify? I that? qualified there in, in Belgium. Oh wow. I didn't okay. have I did go do the Gralak this year but yeah. uh, I didn't have much luck there. Had a couple of issues and big crash okay. and some kind of things but oh, yeah, you. so I didn't qualify there but yeah, still going so I qualified yeah. so it wasn't no big drama. But um yeah that's the plan. Do that and I think there is one more UCI event in North Wales the week before. Whether that's gonna go ahead I don't know but North yeah, Wales, plan okay, to yeah. do that. Um, yeah, and like with family commitments and it, you just yeah. you know see how the weekends go. If you know, I've got a free weekend, I'll see what's about. Like, but, okay. um, cool, uh, well, best of luck for this season and the world. Thanks very much. Cheers, bike. Appreciate it. My name is uh, Rich, and can you tell me about your amazing bike setup and and that rear disc? What's that all about? Well, it's from a company called uh, Esgains. Um, 
it's actually just a it's actually a cover on a standard on a standard wheel. Oh, I see. It's, okay. a, it's a hunt carbon wheel. Yep. So it's a very lightweight wheel anyway, and it's an Airsgains cover over the top, so it's uh, it's definitely faster. That sounds good. It sounds cool. <laughs> it's been heavily tested in wind tunnels. Yeah. So it's a it's a really good bit of kit. I need all the advantages I can get. You look fast anyway. Uh, what's the crank set all about? Is that custom carbon yeah, fiber? A, bit more, a little bit more aero. No, you can't actually with a chainring this small. You can't actually get uh, an aero cover for it. So it's just it's just some special plastic uh, tape I put on there. Uh, so you're quite a creative person when it comes to your bike setup. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're very hands on. Yeah, and, uh... I set it up mainly for the growlick really. Okay. And it was definitely quicker on the on the flatter sections. Yeah. Well, why not? You know, if try and get every advantage you can get. Absolutely, yeah. No. There's, I don't see uh, why you shouldn't yeah. take your bike up yeah. sort of to the max. And um, what's the what is the bike? Chinelli is it? It's a Cinelli Zydeco King. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't get the cables inside the frame. That is one drawback. Okay, but um, yeah, I see. yeah, I got a little the flatter bars, aero gloves, aero socks. Go for a good uh, result today. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. Always have a good go. So just see, have to see what happens and keep trying. Hi, I'm Petra Wiltshire. I work and ride for Riley Cycle Works. And you're riding a very cool bike today. Yes, this is the new Reflex, which uh, is just being cleaned at the moment. Um, this is the extra small. Um, so it's our sort of aero, our latest bike, our aero bike. We've obviously got the gradient in the gravel range as well. Um, this is supposed to be our racy one, so investment casted. And um, yeah, I've got some special forks that have been done um, in the Formula One paint shop from the Sadies. Oh, wow. Um, these are our aero bars. Okay. And um, yeah, I'm running a mixture of SRAM Force with a rival cassette on the back and a 1144. And I'm running actually a 38 tooth uh, chain ring on the front just to help my legs on the climb. <laughs> Strada's uh, Gravel Ultra Plus uh, wheels at the moment. And how wide are you going on tyres? You're going big. I've you? gone 45s actually. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the Gravel Kings were perfect for this. Yeah. They work really well today. Yeah. I'm getting used to them, and they do they do roll really well. Um, and I'm quite impressed with how they do they grip on the corners. I I was a bit unsure, but I they've got a good profile, so. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with them. My name's Howie, and I am riding a Moots Route 45 today. And what's cool about it? You've got a silver GRX, I see. I've got the GRX Limited Edition on there. Yep, I'm running Redshift on the back and on the front to give me a bit of um, compliance on the rougher gravel sections, make it a little bit less gnarly. And what tyres, how wide and tyres are you going for? I've got 45mm, and they are... Um, Rennie Hearse. Oh, nice. Yeah. They're some big nobbles, aren't they? They are. They're getting a bit less big at the back. <laughs> and you said just now off camera, you fitted a, a quick release in your seat post. Yeah, I was, I was doing the um, Grinduro last year, and the last segment was a severe downhill route. So I thought, right, I need to drop a post or I need a quick release so I can quickly pull that out and slam the saddle down. That's a Which, really good idea. Yeah, it was really something that idea. every bike, every mountain bike used to have one. Yeah. But you don't see them anymore, but um, Wolf Race make that. So, yeah. And you had fun today? Great. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why is it so good as an event for you? It's, oh, the people. Yeah. The people are real gravel racers. They, Everyone's so friendly. The, the route is brutal, but um, <laughs> it, you get at the end of it, you have a couple of beers and... So it's so enjoyable. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Thank you very much. No problem. So James, what's the best tyre for Welsh gravel? Uh, honestly, for us, we see kind of two different ways of looking at it. So Gritfest, you bring in mountain bikers who are doing a bit of gravel racing, and then you bring people from the road scene as well. Um, and what we, what we tend to find is uh, people coming in from the mountain bike side, uh, going for something like the Sendero or the Resolute, a bit more familiar to them, what they to a, a kind of the tread they'd have on a mountain bike. Um, you know, it gives them a bit of peace of mind, especially when they're pushing on on the descents. And, and then you see uh, people come over from road biking, kind of want a, a tire that is, again, a bit more familiar, something that looks a little bit more like a road tire. So a lower tread, a rounder profile. So something like the Valpine. Um, yeah, really rounded, uh, 
so it rolls nice and fast on the tarmac. And then you've got the Riddler, which again is something pretty similar to that. You know, it's rounded, uh, small blocks in the middle, so it rolls really fast, and then some, uh, you know, raised edges. So when you lean in, you've got a bit of extra there for. Uh, is that because Rody is more concerned about speed and Mans Bike is more concerned about grip? Um, probably, yeah. They can kind of play to their strengths. So the roadies, you know, they tend to be the better peddlers and they, you know, they're going to make the most of that by having a, a bike setup that works with that. Whereas the mountain bikers, you know, they want to corner fast because they're used to that, you know, off road. And um, so, yeah, they're kind of tailoring their bike setup to kind of suit their riding style. Okay, what about tyre width? What's the sweet spot these days? 40, 45, wider? We're wider and wider. Every year it seems to be really? wider and wider. Um, so yeah, we've uh, we've got a bunch of new 45 mil tyres coming out in the next couple of weeks. Cool. So yeah, Hot scoop. look out for that. But yeah, 45 mil seems to be the one. You know, it fit. There's a lot of uh, bikes that'll fit that now. Um, so yeah, we're basically expanding the range to to make the most, give people what they want. They want they want bigger tyres. What's your view on mixing and matching? Like bigger tyre in the front, faster rolling tyre in yeah. the back. Yeah, um, yeah. A, well, a we, we actually see that uh, through OE sales as well. Okay. So a few brands are specking like a, a knobby tyre on the front and something a bit slicker on the back um, or slightly bigger volume on the front. Generally, the limiting factor on the bike is the is the rear triangle for, for width. Okay. So if you can get uh, you know a bigger tyre in the forks, then that's going to give you kind of a, a little bit more... Uh, I know, almost like tyre suspension through the bars, yeah. Yeah. and then you're still, uh, you know, you're maximising your, your gap on the rear, but yeah, on the front you're, you're getting more control, you're getting a bit more comfort. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, come, it's spec'd on OE, and then everybody sees that, and they're kind of following that, okay. that, uh, okay. that along. Um, is there a tyre that's a kind of head and shoulders most popular in your range? Uh, the Riddler. Um, it's actually, it's an early gravel tyre anyway. Um, so this was spec'd again OE on a lot of bikes so people like to buy what they're familiar with if okay. it came on their bike they buy it the Volpine has really taken off um, I don't know the exact numbers but it's right up there now catching up with a Riddler and it's barely been specced on bikes yet yeah, maybe a okay. few in the last year or so but we're talking you know seven eight years with a Riddler so it's been around a long time okay. um, but yeah Volpine's definitely catching up um, yeah. are, we, are we mainly talking 700s here, not 650p? We're talking about still? 700s, yeah. Um, 650 seems to be uh, on, a, on a decline. That's that, shame, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, we do some nice treads for 650, so we're not going to stop. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have that size. Okay. Um, but yeah, our focus is uh, at the moment, or everything we seem to be looking at moving forward is uh, looking after the, the 700c and wider tyre, okay. wider tyre market. Fantastic, thank you very much. No worries. So carrying stuff on gravel bikes is a big business. And we're yep. here with Telfin, and you've got some new frame packs you're going to show us? Yeah, we've got, um, basically we launched them a couple of months ago. So we've got nine sizes of frame bags that we've just launched. And these are mainly for drop handlebar geometry, okay. so gravel road bikes. Uh, split into six half frame bags, so like the full length, and then three wedge, which allow you to run like a much bigger bottle at the back. So okay. it depends on like what you want to carry really, as okay. to what's the best. but. Yeah, it took us three years, three years to wow. get to this point. Okay. Uh, so we started off the process by asking our uh, customer base to send in photos of their bikes with uh, like their bottles. So we could then like sort of create, we created some like software, some custom software that basically pulled all these photos. So we had like over 600 bikes come in. Yeah. Then we uh, pulled those photos in and it gave us a heat map. So it gave us like the starting point to actually sort of like get to the, the first like, size and then we can work out what sizes we needed. Wow. And then we suddenly realized that we don't, or we can't just have like two or three. It had to be like nine sizes. Nine. And is that nine for now and it'd be more in the future? Is nine like for next... now. Okay. Yeah. So technically there is actually a 10th one launching relatively soon that we're just going to pull into it. Okay. But then we're also going to be doing like sort of more specific for mountain bike geometry. So hardtail geometry is slightly different to like gravel, um, and so therefore like we're probably going to be bringing out some more. I haven't got a date yet, but it's we're working on it. Okay. So this is your bike here. Should we have a quick look yes. at a, a typical setup? I guess this got a yeah. full, well not a full, but a, a, a typical setup. Yeah, this is basically um, just an example of like sort of some of the products we do. So obviously on a uh, ride like today. Uh, you may be, you, it's a bit overkill to have like our aero pack on the back here, but um, I've got on here is this, is our smallest of the zip top two bags. So we do five different uh, top two bags. So there's three zip sizes and two with a flip top that we've actually created ourselves. Um, personally, this is the one for me because I get knee rub. 
And so this is a 0.8 litre and it tapers vertically. So it tapers this way, it tapers this way. So we've mapped it so it should reduce the chances of knee rub as much as possible. Yeah. Um, it uses our V-mount. So these are our kind of like patented fittings. And as you can see here, it is totally rock solid. And that's even without a front strap. So we don't need any front straps on these bags. And the other nice thing with the V-mounts then is it protects your frame. So you don't have to like worry about any sort of tape on your frame or anything. Mm -hmm. It literally will actually stay in place so well that you can have a beautiful frame and it will stay beautiful. Yeah. Going down below, we've got um, the frame bag. So what makes our frame bags different to every other frame bag on the market is two main things. Obviously our V-mounts, so the way it attaches. This means that basically it will not move and it shares the same spacing as the top tube bag so you can share straps oh, that's so clever. it makes it look super nice and clean clever, yeah. uh, then inside obviously we're uh, we're known for like sort of like introducing a lot of technology and a lot of things into it so inside the frame bags you have two carbon rods so there's a carbon rod on each side and in the top is also a carbon space frame so effectively what this does is it cradles the zip which helps to support it. So it means it works completely one-handed. Oh, wow. And then the other nice thing with it as well is that prevents bulging. So if you're somebody that likes like stuff, loads of stuff into your frame bag, but it suffers from knee rub, that will eliminate that as an issue. Does it add weight though? It's Minimal, carbon, but... it's carbon. So yes, you know, you know, they're not the lightest on the market, yeah. but the fact is that they stay in place. Okay. They don't bulge. They hopefully have the most reliable zips on the market at the moment um, and yeah like I said what we've done as well is this carbon frame if you don't like it if it's a bit too stiff for you or anything else like that you can actually remove them yourself oh, that's clever. so they come out through the hydration port on the front of the, the pack so you can tune it how you want it really so if you want to make it a little bit lighter you can make it lighter okay. cool. and this is the 4.5 litre so it's slap bang right in the middle but what we've done as well on our website is if you go to the frame bag page there's a really cool sizing tool so you can take a photo of your bike and then upload it and then drag in our different frame bags and you can see exactly which one fits that's cool so and that helps because obviously with nine different sizes yeah, lots here, that can be a little bit tricky to work out which one is the best and this is the original product which kick started the company yeah, it's, six it's, years ago, seven years ago. So ago. this particular one, the Aero Pack, was uh, kickstarted in 2016. They're still so, the most popular product in the range. It's the one like yeah. people yeah. know Telfin for. So exactly, it's the it's the arch. So this is effectively what we call a stabilised seat pack. So it's got a fully waterproof roll top bag on the top. Uh, there's direct access as well, which is really good. So you don't have to undo. You can actually see my fetching little uh, blanket nice. in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the nice thing as well is it's compatible with the majority of bikes. Okay. So uh, it uses our axle, so you swap your axle over. So this is our particular axle, which then allows it to be completely quick release. So what you do, you pop this front bit, pull the two little pins, and then it comes off. So super easy to do, super quick. Everything is modular, so everything is replaceable. This is our carbon fiber version, and we also do another one with pannier mounts so you can run side panniers and we also do aluminium as well which is obviously much more economical in terms of price but performance wise exactly the same cool. lots of products for lots of applications absolutely perfect thank you very much no worries okay let me give you a quick look at a bike i chose for the event today and i went with the cervello espero the new one i reviewed a few weeks ago link up above and down below in case you missed it and definitely a good bike for this course the Sparrow is at the racier end of the spectrum and that really matched the course well. Definitely helped me go as fast as possible. Quite aggressive geometry, aerodynamic profiles, aero wheels as well. And yeah, it worked really well. There were a few quite tricky bits where a more progressive, slacker, bigger tired gravel bike might have been better or maybe even a mountain bike. But it got me around with no uh, sketchy moments or not too many sketchy moments anyway. Um, so all good. Some comments on the equipment. So 40 mil wide WTB Volpine tires, a very fast rolling tire, but good cornering grip. Definitely a tire on the faster end of the tire spectrum. Uh, there were a few sections where I wanted a bigger tire for more comfort and a bit more grippiness from the tire tread as well. Nice aero wheels, pretty tough wheels. So I definitely dinged the rim on a few rocks. Um, I didn't puncture, 
so that's all good and no damage to the wheels or spokes so all held up very well indeed. SRAM Rival Explore group set with a 1044 cassette was mostly okay. There were a few climbs that I wish I had a Eagle cassette or something a bit bigger. I was using that 44 quite a bit, uh, but a nice range of uh, gears and even used a 10 tooth as well a few times. And good chain retention meant the chain didn't drop at all and no chain device was needed, but there is a mount for one if you want to go for one for a bit of extra security. Comfort from the bike is pretty good actually. Nice round 27.2 mil seat post and quite drop uh, top tube and these rear stays gives lots of possible flex and did give a fairly smooth ride. Not the smoothest riding bike in the gravel space, but uh, wasn't rough or harsh at all. And for equipment, I used a saddlebag with all my spare tools and bits and bobs in there and a Silka handlebar bag for my snacks and spare clothing. And I used the new Hammerhead Crew 3. And because I forgot to charge it, I had 20% when I started the ride. So I switched on the battery saving mode and four hours later, I got 1% battery. So pretty good, pretty impressive that it lasted the entire ride. Anyway, that's a look at my bike and all the other bikes at Gritfest. Definitely an event you should put on your radar um, and sign up for next year. I'll put a link to the website down below. And if you want to see a review of the Aspero, then watch that video up there. And of course, don't forget to subscribe by hitting that button right up there. But that is all today. I'll see you again very soon.